Hopefully this is a fun way to make a crankshaft like this. That was the point. Make it fun, make it easy, so it's not frustrating to kids. So the first step, I'm gonna, this is my, these are my measurements I'm gonna go for. Get a piece of wire a little bit longer than that to accommodate the bends. And, you know, I'll, I'll make it, I'll, I'll mess it up, but not too much. So it's bent, I need to straighten it. This is the straightener. The straightener is lots of fun. Clamp to one end of the wire with a locking plier perpendicular to the wire. This is just a two by four clamped onto the table with a hole drilled through it and I put a washer there. The washer keeps the wood from getting, it was getting worn down when I wasn't using the washer. You could have a washer on the other side in case you've got lefties. So you could have one person do this side, one person do this side, that's probably better or you could just have one person do both. Helps to pull, have a little tension here. Keep an eye on this. As I start to spin this, that'll get straight. So you can do this with a drill. It's actually a lot of fun with a drill, but it's also kind of awkward loading the wire into the drill every time. It's pretty easy with these locking pliers, and you don't have to have any power equipment. If you do it too much, this will start to get kind of striated, like a cream horn or something. Um, so I undo that one, then undo this one, and no matter how careful I am, it seems like I always tweak the ends a little bit. So I'll clip that off and clip that off. So that's fun and easy. The next part is using the bender, which isn't too bad as long as you have a nice piece. I recommend pushing the wire through this way in the beginning. You can go this way or you can go that way, either one. Um, but I like to go this way. This is the going to be straight. I'm going to be feeding it through this way as I make the bends. My first bend, I'm going to make three centimeters from the end. So I've got, this is a metric bender. Clamp that down with your hand. Turn this. I don't know if it helps to wiggle it a little bit, but you can. So see how it's not exactly 90 degrees? You could either just go with it or you could do another little bend like that. All right, I want this to be an, a centimeter deep. So I'm gonna go move it to there. It's right on the centimeter mark now. And I'll bend this back the other way. And do a little adjusting if you need to. And then watch how I'm flipping this over. So I'm gonna bend this end back over this way and notice, if I wanted to make this, this jaw here narrower, narrower than a centimeter, I couldn't do it. It's just a limitation of this bender um, that each of these cranks has to be about a centimeter wide at least. All right, so that's where we are. Um, so I'm to there, I need to go back this direction. All right, got my first one in. Now I want to go three centimeters over and then make this two centimeters deep. So there, I've got it on the three centimeter mark. Bend. Make a little adjustment here. Push that out to two centimeters. Bend. Uh, come over here, flip this over. Bend again, push it out to two centimeters, I'll line this up here, two centimeters there, and the final bend. Oh, come on. There we go. So there's my crankshaft. This one, if you're making Stirling engines or something, it's got a 180 degree offset. If you want to change the offset, it's very easy. So now it's a 90 degree offset. Once you get the basic thing made, the basic um, size that you need, you can do some hand adjustments. To go with the fun and easy bender, I've got some fun and easy accessories. Uh, one of them is these little snaps. So when you've got a crankshaft or something, you're, you're trying to attach something to the cranks, it can be a hassle. I've seen places where you have to slide this on first and then bend your crankshaft around it. And that's just a lot of trouble. So you can 3D print these. You don't need any support material. 
just snap that on. You can snap one on over here. I'll snap it on in a second. Um, there's a little friction fit right here, so you can slide this. It's got enough adjustment in here so that you can push this in and out. And whenever you think it's well adjusted, then you can lock it in with a, with a little number six screw. And if you don't have a class set of screwdrivers, don't buy one. Just um, drill some holes in, in, a, in dowels and hammer in some bits. You can make any kind of a hand tool you need with that or, you know, rotary hand tool. So anyway, you see how that works. So I could snap another one of these on here. Um, and this is, this is another attachment that you might find useful. If you're trying to, in some cases, I want a rod that pushes up and down, but sometimes I want a rope that just pulls. So I made this little, it's just a little tiny doohickey here that you don't have to tie. You can just wind this around several times. This is braided fishing line I'm winding. And then pull it into that little notch right there. And then it stays tight. So that's a nice little accessory. Um, one that I didn't use much, but I'm including it here. The universal joint. I had a reason for this, but I haven't used it. But you can, you can see it works pretty well. Just again, all these are printed with no support. Here's an example of one of the crankshafts in use in a Stirling engine. You can see I've got the little accessories attached to it, one to connect a rigid rod, one to connect a piece of fishing line. There's also an adapter to connect to plastic membrane, something that connects the, the crankshaft to a flywheel and some snaps to hold it to the structure. So this this uh, crankshaft could be easily popped out of there, replaced with a new one, and you could pop the new one back in there in just a few minutes. Hope this has been useful to you, or at least interesting.